So I finally decided to update my workstation here. This is my Linux workstation that I do all of my video editing and podcast editing and well, all the media I create and of course all my work is all done right here. And it was being done on an older i7 and it was getting a little bit, you know, testing my patience, I guess you could say, when you render something and watch that little bar just not move as fast as I thought it should. And, you know, rendering takes a lot of time when I drag in a little bit of drone footage or footage from my GoPro, there were some delays in getting the editing done. And, you know, you want something to be nice and fast. So I finally said, okay, it's time to upgrade that i7 because the 3900X has lots of cores and is wicked fast. And I was really impressed reading the reviews on this. I was impressed as soon as they came out with the Ryzen and I almost upgraded them. And I was like, okay, I'll wait a little longer. Then the next version is the Ryzen came out. Now they're to the Zen 2 architecture on these. And I was like, okay, have to make a decision. Uh, well, I don't have to, but you know, I wanted to. And I said, fine, we're gonna build this 3900X. It's a pretty impressive processor. And of course, the first question is, will it all work with Linux? Eh, well, it does, good news. So. I am running Pop! OS on this still, for those wondering, and uh, Pop! OS is, uh, scratches the itch of uh, nice polish, and no, it's not just a facelift on Ubuntu. I know people will be mashing the comments saying Pop! OS is just Ubuntu with a couple extra features. Dig a little deeper. They actually polish quite a bit of this uh, underlying operating system as well as the features, that it works great for all the media editing I do. Uh, it's super solid, super stable. And yes, Caden Live, stable? Uh, yes, it's gotten a lot more stable over the years. I'm actually impressed with how little it crashes compared to, oh, when I started out doing this when it was just torture. And I was also laughing because I talked to my friend who uses Adobe and he pays the subscription fee and deals a lot of crashing himself. So it's actually uh, feel vindicated, you know, I'm using open source and now I seem to crash a lot less than I used to. Anyways, back to the build here. So 3900X, I also, because of, I do editing, all my editing, if you've watched my video, I do on my free NAS in the back that has a nice 10 gig connection, which means I need a 10 gig connection. So I have this Asus 10 gig X G C 100 C adapter. I've actually had this for a while. It was in the old computer and I just transplanted it into this one because 10 gig connectivity is why I don't have a stack of hard drives in here. So I do have this huge case that I'll leave a link to if you're interested in it. Uh, this is not a new case. This is the old one I've had and it's worked well. My friend gave it to me because he thought it was just too stupid big and it fits under my desk perfectly fine. It didn't fit under his new setup. So uh, that's how I ended up with this case. It's not like I really was seeking out this. Matter of fact, it's mostly dead space in here because I've moved to from SSD to a WD black MVME. So now there's even less inside this case than there was before, uh, but I didn't have really a reason to replace it. it. It works fine. And the most important thing to me is everything's quiet. So I have this be quiet power supply which is actually the third build it's been in. And uh, I'm really happy this power supply, it's, it's held up really well and no problems powering all of this. And the fans are these Cougar Vortex fans. They are very, very quiet. They're pretty outstanding just how quiet they are. Which someone's gonna point out that you didn't go with liquid cooling, I see a cooler in there. Yes, you see the Hyper, uh, I think it's called the Hyper 212 Evo. And it also has a Cougar Vortex fan, I replaced the stock fan that's on there. You can get really quiet and I've seen this and people have uh, done a video on this, uh, Linus, I believe, did one, where they talk about just how much quieter you can get with some of these standard fan versus some of the kit liquid cooling. And I know there's a lot of debate in there, but uh, as long as it's quiet enough, why add extra complexity to my build? Now, the video card is in still the old video card I had because I'm not playing games at all on this. This is an editing workstation and where I do a lot of my work and do tutorials. So it needs to power my triple monitors and, and this GTX 760, as old as it is, uh, powers my triple monitors perfectly fine without a problem. I know I may need to upgrade when I go to 4K, uh, but I'm not going to 4K yet. So I have three nice 1080 IPS monitors. Uh, that's still the same setup I've been using for a while. Now the motherboard, someone will go, Tom, why did you go with the, you know, uh, Aorus Gaming motherboard by Gigabyte? Well, Gigabyte makes a solid product and I'm really not that into overclocking because stability to me is more important than the overclocking of the system. I really need this to be very stable. It did come with something weird in the box. Look at that. Thought that was odd. They had a CD in there and uh, CD-ROMs, what? These are, these remind me of floppies now. Uh, and floppies are things that even some of the younger techs go, what's a floppy? Is that the little icon that we have over there? Anyways, 
Uh, so overall, the build went really smooth. It went uh, pretty straightforward. And then we cloned, so I didn't have to deal with reloading. I cloned my SSD right to this and Pop! OS had no problem with it. Now, one thing to note, I did try loading from the USB Pop! OS 18. It will pause because the boot kernel, the kernel that is on the USB that when you download it to do the install, does not have the latest patches for Ryzen on there. Therefore, it pauses with a couple errors, but it times out, I think, after like 60 seconds and then goes into the boot screen. Once you have Pop! OS loaded, including the long-term support, and you update it, it seems to boot perfectly fine because it updates the kernel. Pop! OS 19, if you read through the details, it does give the error, but passes it right away. It's some type of one-off error about uh, looking for something that's not available on the processor. It's I read some of the kernel details on there. It's, it's kind of like a, you can ignore it. It doesn't do anything. It thinks something's there that's not there, so it gives an error that it thought it was there, but it can't find it because the processor list is, and it will be patched in certain kernel update, and I don't remember the details, but they're also not very relevant because it still works perfectly fine. And of course, that's a big concern when you're building a system and you're not just going to run Windows because it's obviously tested to run Windows on these things. Uh, but I'm a Linux person, so yeah, I wanted to make sure it all worked with Linux, and it does. It works perfectly fine. So just I did the clone real quick, so now I'm at the NVMe speed. There's nothing special you have to do. I just use Clonezilla. Uh, I was actually really impressed with just how fast Clonezilla was able to copy uh, there. But of course, it's SSD to NVMe. It's just it's really impressive. And I do, as I've talked before, if you haven't been watching the channel, I encrypt everything. I do have encrypted drive. Yes, you can clone encrypted drives. That's not a big deal to do that. So it's, it, it's, it's really not a problem when I did that. Uh, but other than that, everything else is just a bunch of empty space in here. Uh, it just looks cool to have a big case. And if you're wondering why there's no RGB in it, yes, the side panel over here does have a cool, clear, uh, so windows you can see inside of it. But once again, this side faces my desk underneath uh, and it faces the wall, so you can't see any of it. So I don't bother putting RGB in here. I got a few RGB lights and, you know, obviously my studio here and of course in my office. I do love that stuff, uh, but it just wasn't necessary to do and decorate this, uh, you know, so. I didn't go, didn't go all out on there. I thought it'd be kind of cool eventually I want to build something like that, but uh, that's not this time. Uh, it's, it's less relevant to me. But that's it for the build process. I will leave you a link below to the parts I have uh, and everything that we use in this particular build. So if you want to build something, you're going, hey, does it work with Linux? Uh, this I've talked about before works great with Linux uh, for 10 gig connectivity, and it does connect to the Unify switch in the back, the Unify 10 gig, which connects to the FreeNAS, which also has 10 gig. And you can find, and I can leave links to all of those different components I use for that makes my editing life a lot better running everything on a large free NAS array because, well, videos take up a lot. I have over 800 videos on this channel and uh, that's the cut down edited. There's obviously been more video shot. It's all archived on there, edited on there. Uh, and now all I need is this 500 gig NVMe and a 10 gig connection to carry on with all my editing. Uh, but that's about it. And I know there's going to be a bunch of people second guessing why didn't you get XYZ parts, but yeah. Oh, memory, I will leave that in there. Uh, I don't remember even the brand of the memory, but I, I, I have it in a link. <laughs> I'll leave that there. Not super relevant it's in my head, at least. I know it's going to be really a hanging point for some people, but it has 32 gigs of RAM in there. Obviously, DDR4 with the, in the new Ryzen, but uh, this thing is just really fast. I'm really impressed with it. I'm excited because this video is going to be the first video I edit on there. Uh, and maybe I'll do a follow-up video recorded from that about how fast it renders and how fast it can get things done because I'm going to be doing some benchmarks on there. Uh, but they're obviously they're Linux rendering uh, video benchmarks. I don't know how interested people really are in that. Uh, eh, I don't know. I'll still probably do them anyways. I, I know I'm excited to get rendering on this. So I'm going to end the video here. If you could take a second to click the like button, that'd be great. I forgot to say at the beginning of the video, but if you've made it this far, uh, do that because it helps everything in our algorithm driven lives. And thanks. Uh, questions, comments below. Appreciate it. So I started editing the video from the studio. I wanted to add this to the end of the video to show the system up and running. Uh, still running 1804 AMD Ryzen 9 1300X, 12 core processor, 24 with the uh, threading. So here's all 24 cores showing up here. Uh, the GeForce 760, 64 bit, and the disk though, if you notice it shows 231 gigs. It is a 500 gig. I cloned it using Clonezilla, but I have not updated the 
LVM. So the LVM is a logical volume management, and there's some trickery you have to do to make that work, and I have not taken the time to do that yet. So uh, if anyone's wondering, that may be a separate video or I may end up reloading the setting anyways because I've not taken the time to learn LVM. There's a process for it. You have to specify exactly what the new partition size is. You can't just, or at least I don't know how to just resize something in LVM using Gparted. Uh, maybe it's possible. Haven't taken the time to really look into that because I wasn't out of space uh, well, I had 73% used on this, but I wanted to mention that. The other thing I want to mention is, yes, I'm recording in my office. Yes, my computer's back over here under my desk, and it's not liquid cooled, but it, it's not causing any noise. Actually, I would say it's not any noisier at all, and I'm doing this by ear, and of course, by little sound levels showing up. I do not hear any more noise with this system than I did with my liquid cooled system that was in here previously. So uh, the Evo 212 seems to be doing its job amazingly. Um, I did do some test rendering. It will spin up a little bit, make a little bit of noise, but actually that was the same thing I had with my Luka Cool. Uh, after a little while, the computer would warm up. Matter of fact, my whole office gets warm when rendering um, if I don't kick the door open. Even with the AC, I, I need a little more airflow in here. That's where most of the heat seems to start like building up when I record for a long time. Uh, but I just wanted to you know, show it working, show how I'm recording on it, and confirm that uh, that yes, I know that, that it's not liquid cool, but it's still quiet enough. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.